Welcome back to the channel and today I have a very exciting Blender tutorial. A few years ago I made this tutorial over here where I showed you guys how to do a shirt sewing simulation and this was very popular. It got hundreds of thousands of views, a lot of people liked it but Blender has evolved since that time. We now have Blender um, 4.0 so today I'm going to be doing the same tutorial in Blender 4.0. We're going to be starting by laying out this kind of cool looking pattern like so and I'm going to show you how to put it all together and then with cloth simulation we're going to snap it all on like so. Now just in case anybody's wondering because people always ask why do you actually cut it into pieces like this? Why not just add the color just to a solid piece of mesh? The problem is if we do that we're not going to get these folds and stuff like that and these individual pieces it's not going to look near as realistic as um, it would if we didn't. So that's why we kind of snap it together like this with cloth sewing. So I really hope you guys enjoy this. I will be uploading my final result to Patreon. That's in the description below. And if you guys want to try out Skillshare for free for one month, just use my link in the description below. I have a ton of awesome Blender courses with files and everything. It's nothing to lose. You guys can try it out in the description below. So let's jump in and do some cloth sewing. So I'm going to assume you already have your own character because you're probably watching this because you want to put clothing on your character. So make sure whatever you have that it's in a starting T-pose. Now sometimes I would start with an animated character and I just have it in a T-pose. In this case it's just a mannequin so it's not animated or anything so it's quite simple. But one thing you want to want to make sure is what, whatever mesh you're working with you want to make sure that it has correct normal. So in edit mode just go over to your mesh um, edit properties here and just go to the display normals and make sure they're all facing outwards. Okay, so I'm going to turn that off. And then you're going to want to make sure that your scaling is okay. So go control A or command A and apply your scale. That's really important. And then you're going to go over to your physics properties and you're going to make sure you have a collision. Those are important things when you're going to be adding cloth. Don't forget the collision, otherwise the cloth won't know to collide with your character. So in our front orthographic view, we're going to go shift A and we're going to add in under our mesh options, a plane. And we're going to go G, Z, and in this case, I only have an upper torso. So I'm just going to move it to where the middle of the body is like that. And then I'm going to tab into edit mode. Now it's important because we want that origin point, that little orange dot to be in the middle here roughly. So now we're going to go into our right orthographic view. And with all of this active, we're going to go R90 and we're going to hit enter. Then we're going to go G and we're going to move it forward like so. Okay, now let's go into our front orthographic view and we're going to go S to scale it down about this much. And then let's move it down, S, Z, let's flatten it a little bit and S, X, make it a little bit wider. So probably about this much and then we're going to go G, Z and bring it down. Now a common mistake people make is that they work right against the, um, when they're doing a pattern, they work right against the body like this. The problem is you got to think about it three dimensionally. It's still got to wrap around the body. So you want that extra overhang for that very reason. So don't go too little on that, okay? That being said, I'm just gonna make sure to grab these bottom ones, maybe bring them down to about here. And then we're gonna select these top verts over here. We're gonna go G, Z, and let's move them just sort of about here under the arm. Then we're gonna go Control R, add a cut in the middle. So Control R, double click, and let's just select the left side here and go X and delete. Then we're gonna go to our modifiers and let's go add modifier. Let's click here on search and type in mirror. Let's get the mirror modifier. And to make sure this doesn't pull apart, let's enable clipping. Okay, so now it doesn't pull apart. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this and now we're gonna go E to extrude and Z, let's extrude up to about here. And then we're gonna go Control R, double click, add in another loop here. Let's select this vertex and go X and delete verts. And then let's go over here and select this. G, Z, let's move that one down like so. In fact, I'm going to grab these three here and just maybe move it up just a little bit like that. But we want this angle over here, that's important. And then let's come in here, Control R and this little segment, double click. Then let's grab this vertex and go G and kind of squish it in. Grab this one here. And then we're going to grab both of these and we're going to go E to extrude and extrude them up and then R to rotate them. Like so, and just bring them in here and S to scale them a little bit. Like that. And then I'm just going to grab this vertex here and depending on how big you want this opening here, you can kind of bring this in more or out more. It's kind of up to you, but I like to have it a little bit more out just to have it a little bit wider, that kind of spacing there. Okay, so that's what I'm going to be going with personally, something like that. And I'll bring this down a bit. So you can see we're just making the rough shape here before we add too many details. Okay, let's bring this in a little bit to straighten it. 
And now what we're going to do is we're going to go control R over here. We're going to roll in some loops until we have three of them. Double click. Then over here, we're going to go control R, double click to add in the loop here. And what you're noticing is these are roughly all squares at the moment. And I say roughly, okay, more or less squares. Nothing is too long or too stretched like this. I might come in here, control R, add one in here, select this, double G just to slide it down. We just want rough squares. And then we're going to press A to select everything. We're going to right click. We're going to go subdivide. Let's go to our number of cuts down here and let's just bump it up. I'm going to go with two like this. Okay, that's really good. And then what you're going to do is you're going to come over here where this section is and you're going to go shift alt left click to select this whole loop of verts in here. You can go E to extrude as to scale like so and then G just to move it out a little bit like this. Double G if you go a little bit too far just to slide it back. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go to your edge select option and then shift alt holding and shift and alt left click on here here and here just to select this inside one running in here and then go control B and create a bevel like this. But keep it selected once you've created the bevel. You're gonna go to your materials. And let's go plus and let's go new over here. And once you've created a new material, let's just call it red. And let's come down to the viewport display and let's just make it red so we can see it like so. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go plus, we're gonna go new. Let's just call this dark gray. And let's come to the viewport display. Let's just make that a darker gray. Even though we're not using that one, we're going to use it in a bit. Let's go create another one. Let's call this gray. And then let's just go plus and let's just go um, call this cuts. This is just going to be, this material can be anything you want, but I'm going to go ahead and just make it kind of like a saturated blue, just so we can see it easier. And this, with this still active here, we're going to click on cuts and go ahead and assign it. So we know this is where we need to remove material later and we can easily select it. Okay, but what we're also gonna do is we're gonna come over here to the middle and let's go shift alt and left click on this loop over here, roughly in the middle, and then go control B to create a bevel. And with that still selected, let's go ahead and assign that cuts to it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and we're gonna click on, with our edge select option, we're gonna hold and shift and just select Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up like so. Maybe eight, and then let's come in here like this to the side, all the way in. Let's go Control B to create a bevel. And let's go ahead and assign those cuts like so. Let's enable proportional editing and then grab this over here and then go G. Roll your middle mouse button down to control the fall off and let's just bring this in just a little bit like so. And that's looking a lot better. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over here and let's just press C to get that selection tool. Let's just select all of these bits in here. Let's go ahead and click on a dark gray and assign that to the inside. And then let's just press C and let's just select all of these guys over here in the inside here like this. So just pressing C to get the selection tool. It's pretty easy. Let's grab these guys here like this. And let's go ahead and assign just a gray, not to dark gray. And by the way, let's go to viewport display for the gray and just make it gray like that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to the bottom, shift alt left click on this edge here and let's go S Z zero to flatten it. Let's grab this one here, S Z zero, flatten that. And with this one, we're just going to go S Z and with proportional editing, just roughly flatten it like that, just to blend it in a little bit. And then we're going to go in here, control R, add in a loop. Double G just to slide it up slightly. And then let's go to our face select and then just select these faces in here. And let's go and give it those cuts like so. And then let's select the bottom strip and let's give it the gray material like so. So you can see our shirt is coming together quite well. And now we're gonna press A and we're gonna go E to extrude and we're gonna go and just extrude it back like so. Okay, just so it's sticking out the back here but it's not penetrating. And then what you're going to want to do is you want to go over here to your mesh edit mode and you want to go and look at the normals and they should all be facing out. But if they're not, press A to select everything and then go Alt N and then go recalculate outside just to make sure they're all pointing out. So you see all these little blue spikes. Then I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And now we need to delete some things. So first of all, let's go to our face select here 
And at the bottom, we're gonna click here and then holding in shift and control, we're gonna click on here just to select everything in between. And we're gonna go X and we're gonna delete those faces. So this is our opening. Then we're gonna come over here, select this one. And then just this one here that starts at the bottom of the arm that's kind of um, facing upwards. So where this corner is, just this one here, you're gonna go shift and control and left click on that one and selects everything up. Then you can go X and this time you're gonna go only faces. Then you're gonna select this one, holding in shift and control, select this one. So it just selects this opening in the arm. So this kind of C shape here, X and this go faces. And you can see here, I've, it's gotten rid of this edge. So I'm just gonna select the vertex select option, select this vertex, holding in shift, select this vertex and just press F just to fill that in like that. Now let's go back to our face select and let's this time just select these guys over here and let's go X and let's go only faces. And then we just have to select this opening over here and then go X and delete faces. And once again, I've gotten rid of one here. So I'm just gonna quickly go to vertex select and just select these two and go F just to fill them to make this sort of little bridge over here. So these openings are the openings and wherever these lines are here, these kind of um, long edges, that's where it's gonna all fuse together. So these two are gonna to snap together and you do need those points. And now what about all of these blue areas? How do we delete them? We don't have to go in now and select all of them. Let's go to our face select option. Let's click on cuts. And now if you click on select, it's gonna select all of those cuts. And now all you have to do is go X and you have to go only faces. Let's tab back out. Let's make sure to save. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our physics. We're gonna give this a cloth. And then what we need to do is we need to go down to our shape. Let's enable sewing. Let's give it a max sewing force of 12 to start off with. Let's make sure to save again. And also under our collisions, we wanna go down and enable self collision. So now from frame one, we're gonna hit the space bar. And now we have a nice cloth simulation. Let's pause and right click and go shade smooth. And we can also come over here to our modifiers and let's go ahead and go add modifier. Let's search and get a solidify. Click on that. And now you can come over here and give it some thickness. And now let's go ahead, add modifier, search, and let's type in subdivide, get a subdivision surface modifier. And now this is what we have. Now it's still looking a bit messy in some places. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to frame one. We're gonna select our shirt and go into edit mode. And let's just for now, turn all of these off for the viewport. We'll still see them in the render. We can keep the mirror actually. And now we're just gonna go to our vertex select option. And where we have ones like this over here in the corner, we're gonna just hold and shift and select them over here. And we're just gonna type in F3 and we're gonna go merge and we're gonna go merge at center like that. And let's go to the back here and we got one of them as well. Let's just select this, F3, merge. And let's merge at center, like so. And let's tab back out. Let's go to frame one, hit the space bar. Okay, I have to turn the cloth back on for the viewport display. Okay, now that's looking a lot cleaner here in the middle. So if you guys are wondering why are we doing this instead of just not adding the colors, why do we have to make the cuts? Because making the cuts is gonna make a place where the cloth simulation is gonna fold and it's gonna look a lot better than if we didn't. And that's kind of why we kind of create these pieces that snap together like this. So I'm gonna to go to my solidify, I'll just bump it up a little bit, maybe go out with it. And uh, yeah. So if you want this to have a little bit better quality to it, what you can do is you can go over to your physics and under your cloth, you can take the quality steps and bump it up to 20. And then you can go down to the self collision and let's make the quality over here. Let's make that eight. We're also gonna to come to our end frame values. Let's make that 40 frames or maybe even 30 frames. Let's make sure to save. And now you're gonna go over to your cache over here in your cloth and you're gonna, and once you're at your cache, you're just gonna come here to the end frame and let's make that 30 frames because we have 30 frames over here. That's what I've set my end frame value to. And let's just go ahead and click bake. And there we have it, we have a cloth simulation. Now what you can do if you just want the cloth like this, is you can go ahead and drag this end frame value up. I'll go to something like 90. And then I'll just start it at like 20. So now it's just kind of in this position here. And you can go ahead and apply it. And you can go ahead and sculpt on it. But this is pretty cool. I kind of like 
um, doing sort of cloth simulations. It's a ton of fun. And once you add materials and things, it's obviously gonna look a lot better as well. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I will be uploading this to my Patreon, so keep an eye on that. All of that will be in the description below, and I'll see you guys next time for another Blender tutorial.